Good evening and good day, ladies and gentlemen. It is the case we are back once again for Season 7 of the GT3 League as hosted by the UK Sim Racing community known as UKSR in short on the premier sim racing platform available on PC. That is, of course, iRacing. And today marks round 8 of the 12-round calendar. And what better place to head to to wrap up with the second third of the season than the vaunted Hungara Ring. The circuit located in Hungary, of course, named after the circuit it's located in. This is a circuit which is going to place a very different dynamic on the racing compared to what we have seen over the course of the opening seven rounds of the season. Well, if you can call them opening, we would say the initial seven rounds of the season because whilst the emphasis in the previous seven rounds has all been about both in qualifying and the race, this is a circuit which some would argue is the Monaco without walls, particularly when you're racing in high downforce cars such as Formula One machines. Whereas our GT3s, whilst they have quite a bit of downforce on them, not quite the same as a Formula 1 car, but this is a circuit that due to its twists and turns and also its rather slippery track surface, regardless of where it's sunshine or the rain, it is the case the circuit never quite wears in as much as other circuits do. It is the case that track position is absolutely critical at the Hungara Ring, and indeed qualifying is going to play perhaps the biggest factor of all in terms of determining how our drivers will end up, barring any major incidents of course, or some very dramatic overtakes. But to be fair, it has been the case in the last decade of racing around here at the Hungara Ring, in real world and in the sim world we have really seen this circuit come alive and lead to some absolutely legendary moments in terms of battles and what well, is the case where we see some legendary moments tonight in the commentary booth you have myself paul walsh also known as tx141 or britain the spit depending on what media you follow me on and here's the case that we're bringing you all the racing as a post round broadcast on the uk sim racing twitch channel so it is the case if you go to U what is twitch.tv forward slash uk sim racing you can tune in there now a post round broadcast does mean the whilst the racing occurred as of yesterday on what was Sunday the 7th of August 2022 we're bringing you all of the racing action as if it were live and I should point out that I as your commentator and host do not know what happens in any part of the racing uh, this round so it is the case I don't know who's on top in practice not in qualifying nor in the race itself so if you are tuning in as well the drivers who took part we do encourage you to avoid putting any spoilers in the chat it is the case that we'll be taking a look to the chat every so often to see your thoughts on the racing that's going on but also to make sure that the guys and girls of course who are tuning in who have not found out about the results and are seeing this for the first time it is the case that they don't have the results spoiled for them because that will of course make them a little bit upset perhaps but it is the case that as our drivers are headed into the driver's briefing right now and are being briefed on the do's and don'ts for tonight they've all jumped to the pit lane let's take you through the season ahead and what rounds have occurred so far so here's the case, of course. Hungar Ring today, round number eight, as we make our way down the right-hand side of the board. And, well, it's one of those situations whereby, with the rounds now starting to close on down, little by little, we've only got four more rounds after tonight. And, of course, after today, our drivers will be heading from continental Europe to Japan for the Suzuka Circuit. We were in Japan much earlier on in the season in round number three. We head back there in round number nine for what is the vaunted circuit. And, indeed, a circuit that normally appears towards the end of a given calendar and it is a dramatic circuit one that can normally have a lot of implications in the title race after Suzuka of course it'll be the case that we head back to continental Europe for the Dutch not the Dutch circuit my apologies it is the case the German circuit of the Nürburgring Grand Prix striker and that will be for round number 10 the second of our three feature race rounds whereas the case the race will not be 40 minutes but it will be a full 90 minutes we can expect more than one pit stop and indeed those feature race rounds if we have to go by Watkins Glen the first of the feature races is sure to produce plenty of action. Hopefully we don't see a major smash unlike at Watkins Glen on the opening lap which saw over 10 cars taken out of the race but you can imagine that the Nürburgring Grand Prix circuit it'll be a different tone indeed our drivers will be digging down and digging in hard for their strategies to try and find success. After that, we'll then be making our way to the United States of America for the final two rounds of the season, starting off with Mid-Ohio on round number 11, and then making our way to the roller coaster ride that is Road Atlanta for round number 12, our final round, and indeed our final feature race of the season, and we'll be crowning our champions after that round. But in terms of the story that led us all the way up to this point so far, is the case, of course, we cast our minds back all the way to the midpoint of June. We kicked off for round number one on the 19th of June at the Hockenheim Ring in Germany. We then made our way to the United States to the street circuit of Long Beach, the only official street circuit on this calendar, technically. And then it is the case we made our way to Fuji for round number three of the circuit that's recently been introduced to iRacing before then heading to Watkins Glen, as previously mentioned, in the state of New York. And indeed, Watkins Glen was definitely a stomach churner for 
were many a driver and, well, there were quite a few surprises out there. Giles Villeneuve continued the theme, the Canadian circuit in round number five, and some great racing and indeed some history made by the gold class driver of Nathan Foster. And that was the case in round number six where it's far Frankenstein's. And what was originally meant to be the second of our feature race rounds, it was turned into a sprint round due to the coincidence with what was the 24 hour for Spa on iRacing. And we wanted to give our drivers a break from Spa, not to get Spa addiction or Spa fever. So we turned that into a sprint race. Then last time out, of course, it was the Australian circuit of Sandown, the home of horsepower. And well, we saw plenty of horsepower, over 15,000 horsepower to, to the circuit. And whilst there were a few incidents for the most part, the racing was intense, it was clean. And indeed, there were some brilliant passes made. And well, now we are at the Hungaro Ring. And speaking of the Hungara Ring, we take a look to the circuit map here provided to us by SimRacingWiki.com. And this circuit is located in Magoyrud, in the is the village that's located within the wider city of Budapest in Hungary. is a circuit made up of 14 corners, and well, you can see from the circuit map a very odd circuit in terms of its complexion. For as our drivers make the way from the start finish line down towards turn one, the first hairpin on the circuit, you can see it is the case the circuit looks quite tight by default. And the turn one is a very tight hairpin, and it's been tight tightened over the years to encourage further overtaking with the fact it's such a sharp exit corner it is one of situations where drivers will need to get on the power and cut back to a highly possible or trying to run the car around the outside our drivers will then make the way out towards turn number two a downhill hairpin effectively where it's a much wider apex albeit our drivers will want to take a tight line throughout the corner otherwise the car can understeer wide before it's a flat out run down through the crest of three or really the dip of three we should say avoiding that apex curve that rises very high where plus we'll use a bit of runoff curbing in order to take the momentum out towards turn number four. It's at the point as I try to make the way up the hill to turn number four and we'll ride on board of course in qualifying to give you an idea of what the lap is like on board where the circuit turns into its most tricky and technical part. From turns four all the way up to 11 the circuit starts to narrow very heavily and indeed with a kink of four being a snap down shift or a lift off for some drives depending on their style it will be the case going through four and up into turn number five you'll find that the circuit really now starts to go through direction changes aplenty. Turn five being followed up by the chicane of turns six and seven before the short charge down towards turns eight nine ten eleven which all follow in quick succession a left right left right combination it almost feels as though it's a box of frying out punches with jabs and crosses and it will feel like that to our drives with a number of direction changes particularly as they make their way through turns eight and nine two rather low speed corners but the idea is they'll want to hit those apexes as soon as possible get the rotation done and get back with the throttle for the charge through 10 and 11 where the apex of 10 and 11 are a little bit more flexible in terms of those apex speeds and then it is the run down towards turn number 12. the run to turn number 12 looks long on this map but it is quite a short run we may see some last ditch overtaking moves into turn 12 but the focus will really be on getting a good run out of 12 into the penultimate corner which is another hairpin at turn number 13 and in the run into turn 14 a very wide hairpin at turn number 14 where well, there's plenty of approaches to take the corner to set the car up for an offensive down towards turn number one once again and arguably this circuit consists of what is four hairpins which are the first two corners and the final two corners it is the case we can expect plenty of overtake attempts but our drivers will need to run very close over the course the lap if they want to try and go for moves. Now speaking of making moves, it is the case that if you're new to the world of sim racing or you're a veteran but looking to up your game, then why not get in touch with our series sponsor? And of course that is Swilio Meda Sim Racing Coaching. And in fact, let's hear from our sponsor directly. Hello guys, my name is Suelio Almeida. I am a multi-champion sim racer and professional racing coach with more than 1,300 hours of experience so far. My background is a little bit odd. I'm actually a master in piano, in classical piano. I have more than 16 years and more than 10 international and national prizes in piano competitions and music competitions. With my musical background and all experience about technique development, I brought these skills to sim racing and developed many, many new methods and many, many new ways to efficiently practice and find time in racing as well. Because of that background, I did very well since my very first coaching session that I started because I had to pay my tuition here in Montreal doing my master's degree at the University of Montreal in piano. This is the rig that I had when I started my first coaching sessions two years and a half ago. By that time, I was already within the 0.38% top drivers in the world in iRacing. Back then I was already able to claim my first overall season in Formula 3 in iRacing, which is a very difficult achievement as I was competing with former world championship drivers. I ended up collecting many other championships as well. In 2021, I was able to claim the Porsche Esports Spring Challenge Canada Championship title, Swelio Almeida in the number three, your champions. Which actually put me in a real Porsche 911 on a real track. 
for the first time in my life. And the key for that, guys, was proper practice, efficient practice. I really used my hours to always learn something new. Every time I was going to practice, I was really looking for new information, external information, opinions from teammates, from friends. I did coaching sessions. I really researched. I read books about setups. I read articles, videos about racing techniques and how to develop them. And I really wanted to you know, always grow, never hit a plateau. I really wanted to always, always, always learn something. And nowadays my passion is teaching. After having worked for more than 1,300 sessions, coaching sessions, each session being one hour, and seeing all the development on students going from 2,000 I rating to 5,000 I rating, and students who were having problems with anxiety or not being able to learn, not being able to improve really, uh, conquering their races, getting their first wins and really improving, improving, improving and becoming more confident and happier, I really figured out that that was my fulfilling mission, you know. I really wanted to teach more, to teach more and I was, get, I was gathering information, I was gathering and understanding the patterns of the technique and how we learn faster, how we develop our technique faster. I was even, I I was even able to apply all that to my own technique. With my coaching sessions, I started learning how to coach myself. And that is what this course is about. So as we hear there from our series sponsor, Swallow Amida Sim Racing Coach, and you may be asking at this point, well, why should you listen to Swallow himself? Well, it is the case that he is a multi-champion in numerous overall official series and leagues on iRacing, including the 2021 at Porsche Esports Sprint Challenge Canada Series. And well, indeed, he's taken his craft to the next level. And well, in terms of the contribution from our sponsor to this series, contributing to the prize pool for the series, where the winner of each class, platinum through to bronze, shall re receive a pass or win a pass, I should say, to Swallow motor racing checklist course a fundamental course if you're looking to take your sim racing to the next level but speaking of taking things to the next level here as our drivers get set to try and up their game in qualifying here today for round number eight of season seven of the gt3 league in this case we have our schedule on screen times in british summertime that's bst or utc plus one and it will be the case in just under two minutes we'll begin underway with the lone qualifying session where we'll be seeing the perspective of i believe it will be alex hill heading out onto circuit in the bmw m4 for a couple couple of fast laps and we'll give you the ins and outs of the Hungara ring as he tries to set a good time and well he'll be looking to set his best possible time of course and that'll be about 10 minutes and after which we'll be transitioning over to the formation of the grid for the sprint race 40 minutes in length with a pit stop thrown in there of course kicking off at approximately 10 past 8 this evening and it'll be all guns blazing in terms of looking to get a good start and make those moves early on before settling down into a rhythm and who will come out on top and take the checkered flag in their respective glasses that'll be the big question that everybody will be looking to answer but as we look to the circuit, indeed, CR drives making the way on around. We do have a newcomer joining us today as of what is Jacko Taylor. And in fact, we can't quite see Taylor very well there as we try to look to the pit lane camera. Well, he's in amongst the drivers there, but you can slightly see him in a Mercedes, albeit probably be better when we do look to see Jacko Taylor when he lines up on the grid. But we do have Jacko Taylor, who has been provisionally assigned to what is the gold class as of this round. It's his debut in the series. And you can imagine that assignment may change depending on how he performs and right now he is the third fastest in this final practice session but as is tradition it is Jonathan Hitchin who seems to be setting the time tower alight three tenths faster than everybody else the platinum driver and the platinum class leader by a considerable margin can anybody stop the number 21 driver he seems to be absolutely flying it doesn't matter where he takes that McLaren MP4 12C2 he finds a way to win but indeed we wish all the best of luck to Jacko Taylor on his debut in the 115 car and we'll see plenty of him out on circuit there's no doubt about that as we are now only seconds away from making our way into qualifying. And as we do wait for the transition, we look to the chat and we do say hello to you guys and girls that tune in. There's plenty of you there, which is always great to see. And we say hello, for example, to there, what is it, Matrix 4701, saying enjoy the race, everyone. And indeed, we do look forward to it, Matrix, and I hope you're doing well. We also see there, Diesel T TV or Diesel Twitch TV, Raiden World Party 18. And thank you very much for that, Diesel. We do appreciate that. As we see Alex Hill here from Tiki Simsport making his way out the pit lane for his initial warm-up lap before he heads on to what will be his four flying laps, which is allotted, of course, 
course, in a 15 minute window, and we'll ride on board for a couple of those flying laps. And we also say hello there to my guy, Sai, also to the official UK Sim Racing Twitch channel that's tuning in and got one of the administrators or multiple administrators behind it. We also see Nay for N8F66 there saying hype and indeed a massive hype. And we've also got a first time chat message from Jackie Charlie there. Oh, sorry, Jackie Charles, I should say, because there's no I after the L there, and that is definitely not Charlie, unless it is pronounced that way. But regardless, Jackie, hope you're doing well, and we're saying why not just take the talent to motorsport, where well, is the case. Of course, other drivers here planning to use iRacing and indeed the simulator as a foundation to potentially make the switch over into motorsport one day, or vice versa. Some other drivers, of course, in perhaps not this series necessarily, but other UK sim racing series are drivers with real world motorsport, and well, some are in between. But I hope you're doing well. And we also see there Hellcat underscore UK, although I think we did say hello to Hellcat underscore UK a little bit earlier, who did say yellow everybody, the first person to put a message in the Twitch chat. And we also say hello there to 306 Rally and also to Solos 1450. And also, well, I think that's everyone right now, but if you are tuning in and you've got access to the chat, do not be shy, feel free to say hi. It is the case, of course. And whilst it is a warm summer's day in the United Kingdom here, and I do appreciate the number you've based in the UK, maybe sweating a little bit right now. And I must admit, it's quite hot in this commentary box. It is the case that one driver who will be absolutely sweating is Alex Hill here as he gets himself set up, getting all the tyre temperature and the brake temperatures up to scratch. And as he makes his way into the last two corners now, he'll be trying to go on through. As we do say hello there to Solos 1450's son, Sam there. And I hope you're doing well, Sam, tuning in. And I hope you've had a good day. But without further ado, we jump on board with Alex Hill as he rolls his way through the final corner here onto a lap. And as he gets that exit, you see taking a rather symmetrical line to get on the power nice and smoothly and now charging his way all the way down towards turn number one. In fact, we clear the cameras out of the way so you can get a perspective of what it's like on board. Make this way down towards turn number one here, heavy on the brakes into the opening hairpin, coming all the way down the gearbox before accelerating out and heading up towards turn number two. Using the runoff curve in there on the outside to make sure he gets plenty of throttle and down. Now heading into the braking zone for turn two. Braking early there, about 100 meters, and trail braking into corner apex. And then as he gets back on the throttle, pulling the car over to the left nice and early to widen the entry into turn three. Flat out through three, and now into where's the second sector of the circuit. Looking up towards the crest of four here. A blind apex, he rides his way in on the entry curve on the right hand side. Dab the braking down the gear before heading up into turn five. And there's a bump in the middle of the road here. We won't quite see it from this onboard perspective, but there's a small bump that can unsettle the car but no such thing for Alex Hill as he now makes his way into turn six and seven. The chicane here where you'll see he'll take more apex curve of what's the second part of the chicane than the first to get a straight line and we're heading into turn number eight. Downshifting there to a third gear or second gear in fact and as he rolls his way through turn number nine using the curbing to roll off and now head into ten. Flat out through 10 and now just a lift off and perhaps a downshift there. Indeed, the downshift through 11 and now making its way in towards turn at number 12. Charging down towards 12 at this point. A slight downhill braking zone and braking at about 70 meters there where the left hand side curbing started. And as he exits out, keeping two wheels on the circuit but widening the exit as much as possible before rolling through turn number 13. Another hairpin style corner gets back on the throttle and you'll see here how he pulls over towards the pit lane entry before pulling the car over to the right and going his way around here and going for a late apex as he makes his way through 14 and that is one of the many ways you can approach turn 14 some drives will go for an early apex some will go for a symmetrical but Alex Hill there with a nice and fast lap to start off his session and indeed that was what was a 142.28 and a nice lap as he parks up and jumps back to the pit to go once again here and I think he's decided to put on a fresh pair of boots each time or fresh pair of tires as we say in the proverbial English as he makes his way back on out but of course this second out lap or second warm-up lap will actually be classified as one of his flight lap so you'll only have two more laps to go after this as we see him make his way on round but hopefully that on board there has given you a bit of perspective as to the Hungarian circuit and the one thing that's very noticeable is after the first two corners how the circuit whilst the whip stays you can see just how hard it is in terms of finding the space to overtake where the run after these first two corners at turn number three here and you can see as Hill rolls is wound down it looks very wide into turn three and you can go too wide through turn three but the problem is going too wide there is going to cost you a massive amount of time as he 
rolls his way up the hill. But as he goes charging up there, we say hello to Alex himself, Hate Fury 101, saying next line lap is my last lap. And we appreciate you clarifying that, Alex, and I hope you're doing well. We also say hello to Sam Congreve there in the Twitch chat, saying good evening, gentlemen, and good evening to you, Mr. Congreve. And indeed, Sam Congreve, a very fast Mercedes driver. We're looking forward to seeing how he gets on here today. Wasn't quite on the pace, to be fair, of hitching last time out at Sandown, but definitely really looking to try and be the best of the rest. And in a fight with the newcomer last time out, of course, of Oliver Fennell, or some of you may know him as Basic Ollie on YouTube. Indeed, a major Twitch streamer, well, not Twitch streamer, a YouTube streamer, as I'm to understand it, for sim racing, particularly on iRacing, and also has forayed into other sim racing titles, such as Gran Turismo 7. But whilst we are waiting for Hill to make his way onto his final flying lap, it is the case, if you didn't know, here at UK Sim Racing, we are affiliated with multiple sim racing companies and real world motorsporting companies, including Swallow Meta Sim Racing Coaching and Race Anywhere, just to name two. And we actually recently acquired an affiliation with Demon Tweaks as well. And it is the case if you do head to our website, ukcimracing.co.uk today, there is a page where you can see all of our affiliates on a particular button on our homepage. And if you click on our affiliates, you can make purchases through their websites, which will result in discounts for you and a kickback to us, which we can use to fund future series. It should be clarified, UK Sim Racing is a non-profit organization and every penny we make goes back into investing in the series that we run year in year out and as we see alex hill here year in year out of course looking to up his racing within the world of iRacing, racing and right now looking to go on to an even faster lap try and break his way into the 41s there's no doubt about that we now look to his lap from the exterior cameras here as he rolls his way on through the platinum driving the 276 car and what you'll see here from the exterior cameras is just how pronounced those direction changes are, particularly in the second portion of the lap, or that second sector, if you will, as we are, of course, using the Formula 1 sector lines. So he heads up towards turn number four here, and now the direction changes really start to come into effect. And the main thing is, every time he merges from a corner, he needs to pull the car over to the other side of the road to set the car up for the next corner apex entry. And that is the key thing around here. Rotation is so key. And what we're potentially expecting here, of course, this is an open setup series, so our drivers can set up their cars for the best possible and driving for them. We're expecting the handling orientated cars, such as the Porsche 911, for example, to be able to do very well around here, particularly if they can qualify well. And on top of as well as the Porsche, we have, of course, got the Audi R8. We've also got what is the Ferrari 488 GT3 Evo. So those cars we can keep our eyes out for. And also I do think that hitching in the McLaren is definitely going to be on fire around here if he hasn't been all season. But Hill making his way up towards the penultimate corner of turn at number 13. And as he rolls his way through the hairpin here, of course the BMW, a very stable car over curves, but it can feel as though it wants to understeer a little bit with the engine in the front. But as he makes his way through the final corner, gets it nicely hooked up, bringing the car through the middle of the road to a late apex and coming to the line here. What's Hill going to be able to do on his second flying lap well in the end it is a 41.989 and in the end that will be the best Alex Hill set and we'll have to see where that puts him on the grid speaking of the grid we'll be heading to the grid very shortly and taking you through how they all lined up for the purposes of today's race before we go racing we'll be right back in about one to two minutes
Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's take you through the grid for today's race at the Hungar Ring in round day of the GT3 League Season 7, as brought to you by UK Sim Racing. Line up on pole in the end, Cy Anthony and the Symphony Esports Mercedes taking pole position in a surprise of a 41.298 in the end, two tenths faster than Damien Lobbit, who in the end qualifies alongside him on the front row in the Audi R8. Oliver Fennell lines up P3 in the BMW M4 and row number two being joined by Jonathan Hitch in there, the four platinum drivers making up the first two rows before Jacko Taylor on his debut taking P5 pole position in the gold class and the privateer in the end line up with Daryl Norquette in P6 for Racing Forces. Sam Congreve P7 with Nathan Foster alongside in P8. Keep your eyes out for Foster over the race. You can imagine the Porsche will be looking deadly with Martin Tillin and Alistair Kurt making up row number five. Behind them Alex Hill and Stephen Kennedy line up on row number six and it is the case the two platinum class drivers there being followed by Billy Bob Ray taking pole position for TGC racing in the silver class ahead of Ryan Davis who joins him on that seventh row. Ryan Masters starts P15, joined by his gold counterpart, Oli Pimley, P16. They make up row number eight. With Phil Diaz and Chris Edisford making up row number nine there. Diaz line up alongside Edisford and indeed the rivalry between the two of them dating back a few rounds now. We haven't seen too much of Phil Diaz in recent rounds, but we're glad to hear the 997 driver is taking to the circuit today. Peter Cox starts off our 10th row for Betty Swallows Racing, and he is joined on that row P20 by Rob Armstrong there, the silver driver. Alan Lever starts P21 on row at number 11, and the two old dudes right is joined by Symphony Esports' Chris Hitch in P22. We then have Colin Patterson, who lines up P23 on row 12, being joined by bronze pole sitter Darren Sharples there. And Darren Sharples, of course, the bronze driver who's really been growing in pace, and he'll be looking to make it another Wednesday if he possibly can. And then behind, on row number 13, we have the two silver drives of Tyson Melinda and Jason Orr, two drives who normally don't do too well in qualifying, but do very well in the race by comparison. And then we have on row number 14, the bronze drives of Oscar Rocha, your championship leader in the bronze class, with James Conley alongside P28, Tom Farrell, and Dave Flanagan on what is row at number 15. And on our final row, Joe Newman and Mark Cadmore line up P31 and P32. Neither of them set in a lap time like David Flanagan in P30. As the field makes its way away here, it is the case we now look to the race info. And well, as our tries make the way through the last couple of points, it's a short formation lap and it will be a manual double fold rolling start. And it'll be Cy Anzi who takes us to the green as he heads up to the final corner for 40 minutes of racing here at the Hungara Ring. It's lights out and away we go. Cy Anthony going very early there on corner exit, which he's permitted to do so. And look at the run that Cy Anthony's got over the field as Damien Lovett under pressure from Fernell already as they make the way down towards turn number one. But under break and they go into the hairpin. And as they do, there's a bit of contact there from Darren Norquette on the rear of Sam Grand Greaves car. And all of our drivers safely making it through by looks things through the opening corner as they charge down towards turn number two. A couple running wide there on the exit curb of one, but that does happen. But meanwhile, we look back up towards our lead and it is the case that Damien Lovett under major pressure and Fennell's going to go up the inside into three too wide they run through the right hander and up the hill they charge for the first time of asking now will either one of them back out here or will the rivalry continue into four it's going to continue but Lovett on the inside and well Fennell they're backing out runs a bit wide oh goodness me and Lovett almost losing the rear of the car in the depression in the exit curb and as they make the way through five you can see how science is already running away with the lead of this race as they come charging down towards the chicane meanwhile Alistair Kirk here going on the offensive up the inside of Jacko Taylor and well Taylor I think has been given a little bit of the elbows out there as he returns to the circuit and Martin Tilling has made the jump on Nathan Foster for the gold lead early on in the race we didn't quite see that specifically on camera but he made that run through turns one and two and Martin Tilling has gained as we're hearing that Darren Sharples has been involved in a bit of an incident alongside Mark Cadmore now where's Cadmore there he is well these two we haven't seen it quite on camera but they've been involved in a bit of a jump I think both the bronze drivers there will be feeling the pain. But Titty Sharples, who was, of course, your pole position driver in the bronze class. But as our drivers now make the way into the latter third of the circuit, we look to P13 driver here, Stephen Masters, who, having made a reasonable start, he's gained two places overall since the start of this race. Now charges his way up towards the final corner. And as they roll the way through, let's take you through that top ten as it stands after one lap. 
comes out after one lap of racing. It is Cy Anthony who leads by a margin of two seconds and grind over Damien Lobbett in P2, being chased hotly by Oliver Fennell, P3. Then we have Jonathan Hitch in P4, followed by Sam Congreve, P5. As the Kirk P6, Alistair Kirk gaining four places since the start of this race. He's come out of nowhere, and the RD Sim Sport driver has a habit of doing that. Darren Orquette, P7, followed by the, the gold leader of what is Martin Tillian in P8. Then it's Nathan Foster, P9, followed by Alex Hill in P10. That's your top 10, and just outside the top 10, the silver leader in P11 of what is TGC Racing's Billy Bob Ray as they roll the way on through the corners once again. But as they come charging down and around, it is the case we can see already how everyone now starting to form into a line here. And that's the thing with the Hungari. After the opening lap shenanigans, we normally do. Oh, my goodness. It's the case. We just cut over to Damien Lobbett and he's pointing the wrong way. And that is a jump to the pits of Damien Lobbett. Now, who else has been involved in that contact? Well, we've got Jonathan Hitchin. Oh, goodness me. And Jonathan Hitchin, I think he's crabbing as he tries to return to the circuit. Or is that just the grass and trying to point that McLaren in a straight line? Well, regardless, no, Hitchin's had a huge whack. Well, that was off camera, unfortunately. You can't take a look back at that due to it's been a replay file. But Jonathan Hitchin's going to try and make it to the pits rather than end up being a lap down. But that is going to release Oliver Fennell to go chasing after Cy Anthony and Hitchin. Well, he's absolutely had the run of form for the last few rounds since Charles Villeneuve, where it didn't go right. And it is the case that Hitchin now in the wars here today. And, well, he will not be too pleased about that. But that's definitely going to open up the prospect of there being a new platinum leader and winner tonight. Will it be Cy Anthony or will it be Fennell? Or could it be Congreve, of course? All three of them looking very smart and fast. Meanwhile, we've got Bitter. That's Billy Bob Ray pointing the wrong way. Oh, goodness me, there's been a, been a whack to another car there. And well, somebody's going a bit slowly ahead. I think it may be the case just in front, Phil Diaz. And what is Alan Lever being caught up in that collision? But meanwhile, Rob Armstrong here says, I'm going to go around the outside through the final corner. It's all kicking off on lap number two as they go on to lap three. And as they come charging down the start, finish straight here, it is the case we can see how Armstrong having to run on ahead as meanwhile is Chris Hitchin battling with Alan Lever here for what is P7, well, sorry, P18 and Lever up the inside there ahead of Chris Hitchin as they roll the way through turn number one and head on down towards turn number two but as they charge on down it is the case that we can see how Chris Hitchin at this point with the silver trial will be focusing more on chasing down Rob Armstrong and again this is a huge opportunity for Hitchin to potentially pick up a win here today or at least a P2 given the fact that he is right now running P2 of the silver class but to be fair behind him that is one Colin Patterson and he will be looking to try and take Hitchin's place and we do know that these two have had a bit of a rivalry early on in the season it's calmed down a little bit given the fact they haven't been too close to one over the last couple of rounds but we can expect it's going to reignite here today and indeed the silver class when you see a runaway leader drop off the circuit it is the case it really does motivate and galvanate the other drivers in the class to push on not to say that runaway leaders are a bad thing of course it's a testament to their ability but when they do see that runaway leader fall down in, in the same in the platinum class everybody does sort of think right now's my chance and so you can imagine they'll all try to push it just a little bit more than normal but of course this circuit is not one to push on and well Nathan Foster will know all about that running in P6 overall P2 in the gold class right now as he rolls around that's Daryl Norquet pointing the wrong way well he's had a big of a moment coming out of 13 or well, through the middle of 13 onto the grass I wonder if he's taking too much apex curve in that Mercedes and the car's just gone round on him because it is the case pointing on that grass there's only normally one way you end up there and that's why taking way too much apex curve and the car simply saying I haven't got any grip anymore goodbye we're leaving the, we're leaving the road surface but Norquette drops down to P12 from what was P6 at the time. And as he makes his way down the straight here, it is the case. Down towards turn number one. He'll be looking to try and recover with the platinum driver, as you see behind Peter Cox. And Peter Cox here being very sneaky with that potential move to the inside. You can do that, to be fair. Let off the brake slightly into the braking zone for turn one because it's a long braking zone. And as well, trail braking into that hairpin apex will enable you to essentially carry a little bit more speed down towards the apex curving. But of course, Cox there did have to bring the brakes back on when he saw that Norquette brought the car to the curb. But it's something drivers can do. They could try and get themselves up the inside very late on in the braking zone. So we do have to watch out for that. And as they roll the way on through, Peter Cox right now is case he's getting six places overall since the start of this race and he's going to be very happy with that the number 68 driver given the fact that with all the incidents it is the case he finds himself in p6 in the gold class right now but he's got ollie pimley behind who's trying to put the pressure on nice and early and can pimley do so but with the fact, speaking from the gold class to the bronze class, it is business as usual for TGC Racing's Oscar Rocha here in the fact the number 19 driver, we did qualify on pole, that went to Darren Sharples, but with Sharples having that instant on the opening lap, Rocha now finds himself, of course, our championship leader in the bronze class, but his lead was diminishing rapidly with the rise of Sharples, 
It is the case, and also the rise of Mark Johnson, who's not in attendance tonight, I don't believe. It is the case here that Oscar Rocha right now will be looking to simply and nail this win to the cross and run away with it and be very happy in doing so. And his closest rival is Tom Farrell right now, running P25, three places between the two of them, and Farrell doing everything he can as well. As we're hearing that Damien Lobbit, after leaving the pit lane to go back out on the circuit, as we see there, Farrell being passed by Billy Bob Ray. I think Farrell more just giving the space to Ray 9, how much faster Ray is in the silver glass. He doesn't want to contend. It. And you can see there, that is Joe Newman, who after a difficult start is trying to find his way on through. And Newman starting from the back of the field, effectively, can't quite find his way past Farrell this time around as they head on to lap number five. And as they do, we look from towards the back of the field to towards the front of the field. In fact, we look to our leader, and here is your leader. Science and the Welshman from Symphony Esports here running away with things at the moment and in terms of the delta in the lap times the last lap he was half a tenth faster than Oliver Fennell in P2 but Fennell right now I think just settling into this race and knowing it's not one over a single lap it is a sprint but it's quite a long sprint not the longest in the world but still 40 minutes will feel like a little bit of a lifetime but meanwhile Alistair Kirk as we cut back here to our driver who at the time was running in P6 going very slowly in the run through turn number 5 I think he's gone sideways at turn 4 and the car has given way on him and he's had to return to speed but he's lost from p6 to p11 and well the rd simsport driver that i think just pushed it a little bit too hard through one of the trickiest corners on the circuit turn number four when you want to carry so much speed as possible but it is the case you carry too much and the car will simply say no and i think that's what's happened to alistair kirk as he now returns to place on circuit returning to that p11 and p7 in the platinum glass and he's got a lot to do but the good news for him is he's going to be racing with a number of drivers within the platinum class and that is of course stephen kennedy who is at the head of this platinum pack and Daryl Norkett between the pair of them in the battle for P9 overall but in front of them they've got this man Stephen Masters here and the gold driver at this point running P4 in the gold class P8 overall he'll be just thinking to himself you know what I don't want to get involved in this but I want to try and keep them behind me for the simple reason if he can then he'll have three platinum drivers who act as a buffer to a Davies and that's Ryan Davies who's down in P12 who's the next driver in the gold class chasing after him as they make their way down the start finish straight and on towards turn number one once again and you can see the long sequence of cars making the way on down here and that is of course what we typify what is the Hungarian circuit and indeed a good point there from Hellcat underscore UK in the Twitch chat look at that snake train on the track map and indeed the Hungarian does produce that but what we'll really be keeping our eyes out for is when our drivers start to consider taking their scheduled pit stops because of course particularly our leaders will want to take their pit stops as late as possible so as not to come out in the snake or behind the snake and have to carve their way through so they're going to use you lose a huge lap time and here you can imagine everybody is going to try and do the overcut so everyone's just going to try and stay out as long as possible but in return of course when you're further down the order can you get away with saying well you're not going to get away with that Kennedy as it's the case he's tapped the rear masters on our camera by looks of things now whether that was a direct contact or a little bit of net code I think Stephen Kennedy there looking up the inside but a little bit too much and in return he's turned there by Daryl Norquette well I think it's the case that Daryl Norquette was intended to do that but in the end it is Stephen Kennedy who has been turned and now Darren Norquette loses the places to Peter Cox and also Alistair Kirk oh goodness me and Norquette and what was Peter Cox are coming together and it all kicks off here as everybody tries to charge their way through the pack and what well, we lose things on camera briefly that's Alan Lever in the walls that's also what is Jacko in the walls there and it, it's the case it's all gone wrong as they now try to pick themselves back up and go racing again and just one little nudge has triggered off a whole concertina effect the dominoes have fallen and Chris Edison that is a mangled Mercedes on that front if I've seen one is the case that Mercedes AMG Evo is not looking menacing anymore it's looking very disgruntled as he drops down to P13 here and rolling his way up towards turn number 14 right now will we see him peel into the pits I think he's got to here that damage is looking awful on the car indeed he comes on in as we still behind that is well no that was not my apologies that was not Jacko Taylor that was Phil Diaz who was involved in that instant there and it is the case that he comes on in and Edison Alistair Kirk down or kept the four of them are coming in in fact we've got plenty coming into the pits here and well those knocks and shoves have really hurt our drivers as meanwhile Tyson Belender has found himself now moving up to P18 overall P6 in the silver class I don't think he would have imagined this at the start of the race but it is the case the 414 driver at this point just got to keep his head down and press on and as they make the way down towards turn number two at this point it could be the case we could see some drives end up finishing inside the top five or even on the podium in their respective classes just for a rate of attrition because as we said earlier on in the show 
This circuit is renowned for not offering increased grip as the racing goes on. It's a very slippery circuit. And as the rubber gets laid down, rubber does get accumulated on the circuit. But given the natural formation of the Hungarian, it is the case that it doesn't quite lay as comfortably as it would at other circuits, such as, for example, the, the circuit of Sandown, which we raced at last time. And that's what our drivers are having to contend with. It's almost as if at some points they're having to drive on ice, but it's a very hot ice rink. That sounds a bit of a contradiction, but that's the way we'd best describe it. As Volanda here looking to roll his way through, and we've got another car off there, and that's Jason Orr with a spin at turn number eight. And, well, the 484 car here in that BMW M4, he's now got to get himself back up to speed. Now, I think there's a whack to the wall, in fact, because you look at that front left bumper, there's a lot of scratch marks, indeed, all the way down the side, the left-hand side of the car. So Jason Orr has been in the wars as well. But meanwhile, we cut back to Oscar Rocha here, who finds himself now up to P15, our bronze leader, and he has got Billy Bob Ray behind. I think at this point, if he hasn't already, he's probably thinking, just overtake me on the start finish straight. Please do not trigger anything else because they have all now seen what it's like when it goes wrong around here and indeed I think our bronze and silver drives will both just appreciate being able to pass one I mean you see Rocha they're leaving a lot of space on the inside and Billy Bob Ray I think they will be nodding as he goes on past to say thank you but as they make their way down the start finish straight with 12 minutes complete we've still got plenty of race time to go plus also the final lap 27 minutes now effectively and also that final lap it is in case we see a little bit further back there well that is Tom Farrell in the Ferrari and taking a bit of a peek there at what is Tyson Belanda and I wonder where Tom Farrell thinks at this point that he's the fastest of the two drivers here, the bronze and the silver driver. Farrell being bronze, of course, but he has to lift off there. Well, he decides to, really, as he lets Kennedy go, and Kennedy trying to recover this race. But as they make the way down and around here through turn number two, Tom Farrell definitely feeling feisty today. He's feeling feisty out there. He's running P2 in the bronze class, and good on him. He's going for it, and that's what you need to do. When these opportunities come, you've got to go on in, because really, in the bronze class, in terms of that top three, it's been Rocha and also Sharples and Johnson that have been the big names and now can Tom Farrell add himself to that big name list come the end of tonight well, right now he's not doing too bad in doing so as meanwhile we cut from Tom Farrell here to what is a little bit further up the road and in particular Colin Patterson who's running in P11 the silver driver in P3 of his class we ride on board here as he charges his way into turn number 11 now, of course, he's chasing after Chris Hitchin at this point. Chris Hitchin, your second place driver in the silver class, with Rob Armstrong just ahead. And remembering, in fact, that Rob Armstrong, of course, our driver who really set the pace in the silver class early on in the championship. But since the opening couple of rounds has been reeled on in, and now the championship has opened up quite significantly, you can imagine that Rob Armstrong tonight leading in at the silver class he wants to convert that lead into a win because then he may be back on top compared to Billy Bob Ray, of course, who was our leader going into tonight. So it is the case. We have got this exchange, but these three silver drivers right now all running in a quite a bit of a distance, but equidistant to one another, about seven tenths between each one of them, and all focusing on just delivering what they can. But as they roll the way on through the corners at this point, it is the case that we can see how Patterson really just trying to press on and looking for the run after Hitchin, but not close enough at the moment by any means. I think he's going to have to be patient as he heads on down the round. But as I try to make the way down, you can see that Hitchin, in fact, kind of bit slowly there through turn number two and heading into three. And as they make their way on down, it is the case that we can see, I think Hitchin really struggling in that turn two hairpin. And I wonder if the Symphony Esports drive feels like he's pushed the card a bit too hard and now he's got to settle it on down as he makes his way up into turn number five. But you can see Masters by comparison. It is one of those cases whereby Hitchin really now earns that pressure as they make the way down towards the chicane and in front will Rob Armstrong just trying to disappear off into the distance and the 45 driver here will do everything he can to try and extract the run onto the straightways because that is where the Mercedes strength is but meanwhile as they make the way on through we look from them to our leader in the gold class running in P4 and well it is Martin Tilling and well your eyes do not lie because behind him is a very fast charging Porsche piloted by Nathan Foster and these two in terms of those lap times Tilling and Foster have only been separated by two temps on that last lap and as they come to the end of this lap they've been separated well they haven't been separated both of them doing a near identical laps to within the hundred is only two thousands between the pair of them Nathan Foster gaining two thousands and Martin Tilling that is how close these two are charging after one another and as they make the way down towards turn at number two it is okay so the number 52 driver here of Nathan Foster I feel we'll be fingers though there's another win potentially on the cards here if he can deliver it but we can see that on the timing tower with all the instance we've had in the opening 15 to 16 minutes of this race. We have got four retirements. Ollie Pimney, Mark Cadmore, Jonathan Hitchin and Damon Lobbit. And it's very unfortunate for Hitchin and Lobbit to have retired. And the, of course the coming together of the pair of them on the second lap. It's very unfortunate. 
but that does of course open up the opportunities for other platinum drivers here today and it's not going to be Hitchin who once again takes the top step of the podium it's going to be somebody else but who will it be and Nathan Foster right now well he'll be thinking about getting back on that top step as he rolls his way on through as they come through turn number eight and up into nine here Foster's got to keep in mind of course whilst he's got the maneuverability in that Porsche it can be very sensitive on those tyres as he wears on so he will have to do a little bit of preservation on the car but I think he's very nuanced in that given what we've seen from him at this season to date but meanwhile speaking of one driver here who's really got to go some now this is the Scottish driver from TGC Racing the Billy Bob Ray the silver driver running P15 after leading the class off the line of course it was the case that instant early run losing him at multiple places and as he charges after Alan Lever, he's got a face full of a fellow Lamborghini Huracan Evo. As we see Oliver Fennell into the pit from P2. Now, is this a big gamble? We look to our circuit map, but Fennell making his way through the pit lane right now. As I look out my commentary box window, it is the case. I think he's targeting that space between P12 and P13 to try and come out. Alternatively, there's a lot of space that's appeared between what is a P6 and P8 there, as we see on the circuit map on the start finish straight. If Fennell can come out into that space, that will have worked out wonders, and it could do him very well in the long run. He's still in the pits at the moment, being serviced. He's made his way out of the pit lane now I think he will come out in what is P8 effectively and in fact we looked at Oliver Fennell here and yes he has come out in a lot of clear space so it is the case our leaders do have a pit window available to them Fennell has just demonstrated that in the fact that he's come out well ahead of P9 driver Rob Armstrong and Rob Armstrong here of course your silver leader as meanwhile Billy Bob Ray has found his way past and Lever slightly off camera and well Lever I think they may have just let it go given the fact that Ray was all over the back of Lever in the run on that previous lap and he doesn't need the pressure but as they make the way down and around here onto what for them now is lap number 11 with the uh, pit stop there of Vanell will we suddenly see Cy Anthony coming in as a reaction pit stop will Cy Anthony for comparison here he is making his way out of turn number 11 and down towards 12 right now and as he rolls his way down under braking the Symphony eSports driver here I think he does need to react for the simple reason that he, if he does he can cover off Vanell's strategy unless Cy Anthony is trying to do something different I mean he's got all the time in the world to make the pit stop to be fair but of course you wants to cover off. No, he decides to stay on out there. So he's going to make me mark my words and we'll have to see what he does achieve. But he does have the ace in the hand at the moment, which is that he can choose when to come on in by comparison. And as he makes his way down the start finish straight here onto another lap, 19 minutes complete. Science, he definitely are looking good at this time. But meanwhile, we're hearing that Tom Farrell has had to jump to the pits. We're not sure what's happened to Tom Farrell, but into the pits does come Jacko Taylor. So he's coming in from what was at the time P6 and the number 115 car making his way down the pit lane here. And as he does, it is the case that Taylor looking good so far as the privateer as he heads on down. But as he rolls down through, the field is starting to open up a bit. It is the case that our battles have subsided briefly. And we look to Stephen Masters here once again as we're hitting. Hold up a second. I think Darren Sharp has had a moment what's happened to Darryl Sharp Darren Sharp was here well I think it is the case he's got it wrong at turn at number four indeed we can't actually see any damage to kind it may have just been a spin through four perhaps turn number five getting it wrong but it is the case that Sharples has lost some more places on circuit it was passed by Alistair Kirk and indeed it's not going well for Darren Sharples here today but we have Sharples making his way back up to speed. We look to Taylor, who's come out of the pit lane. And what well, I think he has avoided a massive banana skin here in the fact that he has come out ahead of what is the combination of Patterson and Masters. He has got Hitchin in front of him, Chris Hitchin. But it is the case that you can see he's got a bit of space to Chris Hitchin. So this will give him time to build up the pace on this lap and then look to find his way past Chris Hitchin on the next lap. Of course, what we ideally hoping is that when he gets a bit closer to the back of Hitchin, say within three four attempts that Hitchin will appeal into the pits coming in this lap but we'll have to wait and see as they make the way on out here it is a case of course that Jacko Taylor if he does get too close to the back of Hitchin from this point onwards and he is starting to really get into the nasty dirty air zone behind the Ferrari in front of him this will hurt the front end of that Mercedes it'll cause those front tire temperatures to go out to a degree but on top of that he'll get a nasty bit of incessant understeer and that can just cost him the pace he needs but he's gaining a lot here in the run out of 11 down towards 12 I think Taylor's got to go for this and indeed there you can see Hitchin I think just lifting off slightly lifting off about 20 meters earlier from his breaking point to save some fuel and also realize at the end of the day the two of them are not in the same race given that Hitchin has yet to pit and he'll know that Taylor has already pitted and as they made the way out will we see a pit stop here from any of the trio of what is Hitchin, Patterson and Masters no they all stay on out 
But as they roll the way out of the final corner here and down the start finish straight once again, it is the case that we can tell that with the drivers who continue to go on out here, they may also be trying to do some extended fuel saving, just trying to make sure they maintain that track position over time. But as they roll the way down towards turn number one, you can see Billy Bob Ray here. Well, he can't afford to fuel save given the fact he's got to keep on going if he wants to chase down a potential silver podium. He's yet to pit, of course, much like the top three in the silver class, but Ray is absolutely going for it. And his next target is David Flanagan who sits in front of him here in P13 and well Flanagan I think at this point is focusing on running his own race and not thinking about essentially a letting Ray through but to be fair he doesn't have to let him through it is the case we are allowed well our drivers I should say are allowed to enter class battle if they so desire and as they make the way up and through turn number four it is the case that Billy Bob Ray will need to find that pace to get on through as we see there look at the alliance that Billy Bob Ray is taking into these heavy braking corners such as turn five it's aggressive there he's trying to send a signal to Flanagan which is I'm coming through whether you like it or not there's two options you can either move out of the way politely or I'll make you move out of the way and right now the CGC racing driver is hounding he is hustling and he's doing everything to go after those points and hoard them in the championship but he's still got a way to go and he'll be feeling the pinch in terms of what is being stuck behind his gold counterpart in front of him as they make the way down and you can see Flanagan there feeling out of the way he's got the message and I think Flanagan respecting the fact there's no way I'm keeping him behind and there's no need for me to keep him behind we're in two different pace races at the moment as they make the way on down. Now some of you may be asking of course what is the value of drivers that are doing interclass battling? So a gold driver battling with a platinum driver or a silver driver battling with a bronze driver. Where well, is the case of course we do have an overall points championship alongside the class specific drivers championships and it is the case that drivers are awarded points overall and that can contribute and that's why you will every so often see drivers across classes particularly when they're in the top 10 really going toe-to-toe -to -toe towards the end of the race for the simple reason that every point counts. And speaking of every point counting, Will Tyson Melinda will want his pit crew to know that every point counts here as he's coming in from what is P16. And as he makes his way on down, he's in P5 in the silver class right now. It's on circuit. And he'll be looking to try and maintain that. But the only driver behind him is Jason Orr as things currently stand. But meanwhile, we look from him to our P2 driver in the silver class, P10 overall, Chris Hitchin here, who continues to try and keep what is Colin Patterson at bay. And Patterson at this point, I think, not able to close up as they roll the way through turn number four and down towards turn number five. But as they roll the way on through at this point, we can, we can tell you that our top six at the moment have yet to bid. It is the case that from Cy Anthony all the way down to an including Brian Davis, they've yet to head into the pit lane. They're trying to stay out as long as possible. And really, it is the game of making sure they don't come out in traffic as they continue to try and truck on around. But as Chris Hitchin here, I think Hitchin soon will have to make a decision whether he decides to pit and looking at our circuit map could he potentially come in now and come out in clear track it's going to be marginal with p17 driver james Connolly, who is your bronze leader at this point in time although he is yet to take his pit stop so i can imagine he may relinquish that lead to oscar brocher who has taken the pit stop and is down in p23 but as they roll the way on around at this point we look a bit further down the order down at p20 and this is joe newman who's going toe to toe with phil diaz as they run their way through turns eight and nine and we ride on board here with the BMW M4 driver. Now, of course, these two both haven't had difficult races. They've both made their way to the pit lane shortly after the uh, Fiatrix that we saw earlier on in the second sector, particularly Diaz, as we hear that Masters and Flanagan both into the pit lane for their scheduled stops. But Newman here definitely looking the faster of the two and looking much happier in the BMW M4. You can see in the body language of the cars as well. Newman taking very aggressive entry lines into the apex as he's pointing the car at the corner, whereas we can see, conversely, Diaz really having to take what we like to call the sweeping lines. We bring the car all the way over to the outside, turn it to the inside for corner apex and then letting it come on out. And well, to be fair, in a front engine rear wheel drive car, sometimes you do need to open up the corner to be able to get the rotation. But Newman definitely feeling as though he's got a lot of rotation in the car. But now, will it be the case that he finds himself caught between a rock and a hard place with our goal drivers coming out of the pit lanes? That's Flanagan and Masters. And Flanagan there is going to sandwich between the two of them, where it is now going to be the case. I think for Newman, he'll want to go up the inside to put the pressure on Diaz as they make the way into braking and there's contact between the two of them there oh goodness me now that is going to be a difficult one to call because Flanagan points in the wrong way well I'm grateful I'm not one of the stewards because that's going to be a tough one given that Flanagan would argue we was already halfway under breaking into the corner and he had wait well, left a little bit of the inside open but nowhere for what was the move to be made by Newman Newman would argue well he left the space on the inside I went for it and then he turned in on me but that will be a difficult one to decipher based on the camera angle we had available but I should of course have a full suite of cameras available by comparison 
But meanwhile, as our drives continue to press on round here, we look to Jacko Taylor, who's just found his way out past Rob Armstrong. And remembering, of course, that Jacko Taylor has already taken his pit stop. Armstrong has yet to take his pit stop. And as they made the way on out, we have had a couple of latency issues for Oliver Fennell in P7. It is the case. We saw him there briefly dropping off our timing tower and back onto it. But he is stabilising by looks of things, so he still is in the race. And we hope that doesn't become anything more serious. Because that, of course, when you disconnect from a race, is the equivalent to a full-scale retirement in terms of an engine blowing up. But right now, Jacko Taylor, the focus of our cameraman's attention, running P4 in the gold class here. And, well, he'll be looking to try and get back onto the podium or potentially even into the lead of the class, depending on when Tillian at Foster and all also, what is a Davies pit? Although, keeping in mind, of course, Taylor involved in that early scrappage incident, it was the case they dropped down a number of places. So I think Taylor at this point will be trying to stay on the podium come the finish, but it may not be more. But meanwhile, speaking of trying to get a bit more out of his opening stint, here is James Connolly, the bronze leader in P17 overall and number 46 car. He's just been passed there by Stephen Masters, and it's, let, it's the case that he's given Masters all the space he needs on the inside into turn one. He respects the fact that two of them are in different races, and well, Connolly at this point looking to try and just keep on going until the very end before he pits in order to be able to potentially overcut Oscar Rocha but I think he's got a long way to go to be able to achieve that but then again you never know what could happen if there was even a slight mistake for example from Oscar Rocha at this point it could swing the other way but into the pits comes Martin Tillin and ahead of him that is Darren Sharples coming in from opposite ends of the spectrum Tillin coming in from P3 out on circuit and it is the case that we can see that Sharples coming in from at the time what was P27 and as Tilling comes on down right now now Nathan Foster will know as we look to Nathan Foster he's got to push hard on this lap and any that follow because Tilling having that pit stop it's now a do or die in terms of can he make the jump and to be fair we haven't seen too many overtakes bar the opening few laps we've seen a couple of overtakes where they've been sort of in a way lift off overtakes and every so often an overtake down the start finish straight but it is the case that we've seen a lot of the overtaking being made on the strategy and we're still due to do so with 12 minutes to go and that is the Hungar ring of course it is a very track position orientated circuit as we've mentioned time and time again today and well as we see Nathan Foster pressing on around here we do ride on board with the Porsche 911 driver who are making his way up towards what is the chicane at this point very fast and flexible as he takes plenty of apex curve there coming out to turn seven and you can just see as the car goes under braking running quite a heavy brake bias towards the rear brakes and that's what's giving him that what is that rotational braking into the corners and i can imagine also quite a bit of ride height on this porsche in order to get to really attack those apexes giving it plenty of rotation but of course with that with the porsche he does have to keep the throttle in on some of these corners and just keeping a little bit of throttle to settle the rear end what with the center of the mass being so far back in the porsche compared to the rest of its mid engine rear wheel drive beers and as he rolls his way through 13 and there's a case that Foster really trying to gun it is he coming into the pits this time no he stays out one more lap at least he's going to keep on going here he doesn't want to come out in any traffic he wants to now just extract the laps left right and center as he makes his way down the start finish straight and as he does he's got to deal with the fact he has got Jason Orr in front of him but Orr is effectively a lap down at this point so you can imagine as Nathan Foster sets the personal best of a 42.715 I think Foster is really going for gold at this point and that gold of course being the win in the gold class but we look from him to Billy Bob Ray running P12 overall and what is P4 in the silver class and well Billy Bob Ray here yet to take his pit stop much like drives in front but as soon as I say that it's almost if he's listening he comes in for his pit stop well, that's perfect time not coincidental time depends on your pick but it is the case of Colin Patterson has been released there and I think Patterson will be breathing a sigh of relief given the fact that Ray was looking so close to be looking to go for a move on the next lap but of course the Patterson now that puts him in a very uncomfortable situation which is he's now got to push very hard indeed if he wants to stay out ahead of Billy Bob Ray because you can imagine if Ray comes out in clear air and he may do so in fact given he's in his pit box right now being serviced P15 and P16 are making their way out to the final corner and Ray is leaving the pit lane so Ray I think will just about re-emerge ahead of P14 P16 in fact he may not as we see him coming out the pit lane on the circuit map no he's actually going to be caught behind the battle for what is effectively is P excuse me, P5 of the gold class between Chris Eddersford and Stephen Marston. In fact, we cut over to that battle and you can see how Ray has found himself sandwiched between the two of them and he's got to go gunning here because otherwise Masters is going to try and get on through to go hunting after what is Chris Eddersford there for P5 in the gold class. But as they make the way up to speed, we hear that Sam Congreve is into the pit lane and as he enters the pit, it is the case we've also got Nathan Foster coming on in and also Alex Hill. So Cy Anthony continues to make his way on around, but now it is 
is crunch time in the battle for the lead of the gold class. And here was your who, the driver who was your leader in the gold class before he pitted Martin Tilling, and he was only a second if that ahead of Nathan Foster. Which way will it go when Tilling comes down towards turn number one? Will he be the leader or will he not? Foster still in his pit box at the moment. Tilling making his way through the final corner here and heading down the start finish straight. Foster is now leaving his pit box. Where is Foster? Here he is. Here he comes. And as we look to the blimp camera here, you'll look for Tilling coming down on the bottom left hand side of that start finish straight. Well, where is Tilling? There he is. And Foster is out ahead just about by a small margin. But Ryan Davis has gone for it to take the lead of the gold class. But keep in mind, he has got to take a pit stop. So Davis is your leader at the moment in the gold class, but he won't be when he makes his way into the pits. And it can't be too much longer given we are 32 minutes into this 40 minute race. But Nathan Foster has made the jump on Tilling. And now Martin Tilling has got it all to do. He's got to find a way past a very nimble Porsche 911 here at the Hungar Ring with eight minutes remaining, approximately another five laps or so to go, including the lap they're on. Can Tilling do it? Or will Nathan Foster make it another win and another trophy to the cabinet as they make the way through turn number five and up towards the chicane of six and seven? Well, you can see Tilling already really going for it here. He knows he's got to go on the offensive early because if Foster's able to get himself back in that room, that Porsche is going to be menacing. Meanwhile, into the pit is our race leader of what is Cy Anthony. He makes his way on him. Well, that's no idea of where he is. It is a case of a bit obscured there, and indeed our camera men have not been able to get the cameras down in the pit lane. But the bigger question is, what about Sam Congreve? Is he making his way on in? Well, he's come out ahead of Oliver Fennell, and Congreve right now running in P2 after pitting. And Fennell going for that early pit stop. It has not worked out for Fennell. It has to be said. He's actually lost the place to Congreve. But right now, can Congreve come out ahead of Cy Anthony? That's the bigger question. It'll be a short stop for Cy Anthony. He's completed his pit stop. And here comes Congreve down the start finish straight. Meanwhile, where is Cy Anthony? I hear you ask. Well, as you can see at Cy Anthony, where he's already made his way down towards turn number one. Cy Anthony miles away in terms of coming back out onto the circuit. And here's Congreve. And the gap between the two of them in that battle for the overall lead and indeed the platinum class lead is 5.2 seconds as it stands as they now make the way into the closing stages of this race but definitely Cy Anthony today seems to have absolutely nailed this one now all he needs to do is get it to the end and with a five second advantage I think he can afford to just turn the wick down slightly if he feels it's safe to do so because of course some drivers if they're not running at 100 percent then they do start to mentally struggle and well it is the case it's a real world thing we've seen it time and time again from drivers and of course none other than the infamous Ayrton Senna, if he wasn't pushing at 100% all the time, there was more likely, the rumour has it, that he would make a mistake or have an incident and, well, could some drivers be like that as well? As we're hearing that Alistair Kirk has had a off track and, in fact, has had to jump to the pit lane and, well, it's not a happy day for Alistair Kirk from RD Sims, as he's retired from the race off camera and he's going to be retired and classified as P26 come the finish. But, meanwhile, we look here to the battle for the gold lead. It's Nathan Foster at the head of the two of them and it's Martin Tilling at the rear of the pair as they roll the way through turns eight and nine but as they do we also look here to Stephen Kennedy who looks to move up the inside to outside through two and three versus oh goodness me down no care they're getting the elbows out and as they both return to the circuit there well particularly Kennedy returns to the circuit after being made to have a little bit of a tourist run off it is the case Kennedy will that knock has upset something on the car for the Scottishman and also going wide and picking up marbles and dirt on the tyres well he has had difficulty in making it into turn number four and Kennedy well he is not having a happy day it is the case that it has gone very very wrong for Stephen Kennedy well it's one of those days I think for the platinum driver he's going to be P6 if he finishes where things currently stand P6 in the platinum class so good points to the board but he will not be happy with that but meanwhile we can see here Dave Flanagan as he rolls his way through what it turns eight and nine chasing after Adam Lever here and Will Flanagan of course has been in the wars somewhat but as they make the way up through turn number 11 and down the hill towards 12 it is the case the 789 driver at this point looking to try and gain one more place and get himself into P9 in the gold class come the finish but Alan Lever to be fair he may not be the fastest driver in terms of outright pace but he is very smart when he needs to defend and Flanagan will know all about it soon enough if he didn't know already now to answer the question there from Solace 1450 was it the case that I'm suing by Nathan there that's a reference to Nathan Foster did he get pole in the gold class no that pole position went to the newcomer today albeit a provisional gold driver he may be reclassified depending on performances of course because he is new to the series of oh, Jacko Taylor's I'm to understand and it was a P2 in the gold class for Nathan Foster in qualifying but right now Nathan Foster in control in the lead of that gold class and definitely making amends for what was not perhaps the perfect qualifying session but as we see here 
here Flanagan charging after what is that P9 well Lever keeping them at bay for the time being and as we cut from them to what is Billy Bob Ray by comparison, we can see Billy Bob Ray here still stuck behind Chris Hitchin after taking those pit stops. And right now, Billy Bob Ray has recovered to P3 in the silver class. Well, he won't be recovering to P3 for much longer if he makes mistakes that are slightly worse than that, running deep into turn number five. But the Scott there really it shows you how hard he's pushed. I think he's taken the loss out of the car, but his comfort factor will be that he has the UK Sim Racing founder, Chris Edison, the gold class driver here, who's really acting as excuse me, the cork in the bottle for Colin Patterson behind, and the silver driver at this point will look to try and find his way on through. As they make the way through turn number 11 and down the hill towards turn number 12, you can see Patterson getting a good run on the exit of 11. Can he find his way past Chris Edison this time? No, he can't. And Edison, to be fair, will be hoping he can keep Chris, uh, not Chris Patterson, Colin Patterson behind him, because then he's got Stephen Masters who's starting to look dicey. So it's the case here. I think Edison will be trying to hope that he's got a silver rear guard to the end of the race with three minutes to go. And meanwhile, Patterson will be hoping he can clear the gold drive and go hunting after Billy Bob Ray and Chris Hitchin. But how that turn out in practice, but we'll wait and see. But Edison here will have the straight line beast of the V8 to the Mercedes down this start finish straight. You can see, look at the gap he opens on the Huracan with his Audi V10 engines. They make the one down, but meanwhile, that's Darren Orquette taking a look up the inside of Stephen Masters for P14. And the Platinum driver comes on through for the overall position, but he does slightly overcook it through the exit of turn number one. And as they head their way down towards two, Masters now will get the run on the outside. Can he hook it all the way around the outside to inside here? No, he does fall back a little bit in the run. He goes to the cut back instead, out of the second hairpin. But Darren Orquette covers him off, puts it in the middle of the road and says, I see what you're trying to do. It's not happening today. And Darren Orquette moves up to that P14 as he makes his way into turn number four. As they roll their way through the corner, we do look from them back to our battle for the lead of the gold class here. As our race leader sets the fastest lap of the race, Science, he sets a 41.709. The man is absolutely flying. Where is the case? He's opened up that gap to Sam Congreve now to 7.2 seconds almost as they head on to what is lap number 23 and we do believe they may creep another lap in so we're likely to see a 24 full flat but focusing on the focus of our cameraman's attention it is the case that Nathan Foster here goes a little bit deep into turn one and as we ride on board the gearbox here of the Porsche drive being chased by the chunky grilled BMW M4 it is the case they make the way down into turn number two and well you can see Tilly trying to go around the outside can he get the run round no he has to back off there he hasn't got the rotation to hang it around but as they make the way down through turn number three that's the first sign there from Tilling that he's going hunting for the win here and Foster is on the back foot can he put up the defense long enough they'll have one more lap after this we believe in order to seal the deal and who will it be on that top step and Foster right now he's in the more technical part of the circuit He'll be feeding them slow. At this point, he'll be comfortable. But as they make the way up through turn six and seven, now Tilling will be thinking, OK, I can't really attack him here. He's faster than me through the second sections, but I've got to stay close and get the run onto sector three and the start finish straight. And as they make the way through turn number 11, you can see that the difference in the body language of the cars, where is the case of that? That was being at turn at number nine, sorry. It is the case. You can see how Foster has to avoid those apex curves. Meanwhile, Tilling, by comparison, can take plenty of curb. But the thing is there, Tilling went a little bit deep through turn number 11 and as we see there Jason Orr lifting off for the pair of them they're not to impede it is the case that Tim has fallen back a little bit and that may have just cost him the opportunity in the run down towards turn number one meanwhile as he makes his way past my commentary box window Cy Anthony goes on to the final lap of this race as your race leader charging off into the distance and now as they roll the way through one more time they'll take on the circuit and whilst Tim goes hunting after Foster we can see Billy Bob Ray going hunting after P2 in the silver class Rob Armstrong has disappeared off up the road Rob Armstrong is the best part of what is four and a half seconds away in the lead of the silver class so it's about settling who will be on that second step of the podium will it be Billy Bob Ray or will it be Chris Hitchin and to be fair Chris Hitchin has done nothing wrong all race he's absolutely perfected this race he's not put a single mistake into it and right now the Symphony Esports trial will be thinking what do I have to do to bring home a P2 well, all he's got to do is keep the fast charging Billy Bob Ray behind him he just needs to focus on those corner exits and let the Ferrari do the rest of the talking as they make the way out that final corner and onto their final tour of the circuit 40 minutes complete the white flag is out Barney flag waves the flag and as they head on around this time now will we see a potential move from Ray no he's too far back but meanwhile in the rear of the picture there you can see 
see how feel Diaz meanwhile is holding over to the right and Stephen Kennedy makes his way on throw Kennedy being let through by Diaz there realizing I think is the case there's no need for them to battle as they make the way down the straight meanwhile David Flanagan battling with Alan Lever still and Alan Lever still holding off Flanagan for P9 in the goal cast for P19 overall they have not changed at all since we last saw them and as they make the way out to the corner will, will this time will Flanagan find his way on through well we do have to cut away ladies and gentlemen because he makes his way out of the final corner here is your race leader and he is our race winner it's Sly Anthony from Symphony Esports who takes the win in both the overall and the platinum class category and he takes that win by nine seconds in the end ahead of Sam Congreve with a deserved P2 wasn't quite there with Anthony today but still a brilliant second place and then it will be Oliver Fennell who takes third place overall and in class and it is Nathan Foster who at the deadlock he was able to bring home the win in the gold class ahead of Martin Tillin P4 overall for Nathan Foster P5 for Martin Tillin Alex Hill coming across the line P6 and on his debut it's been up and down but in the end a P3 in the gold class for Jacko Taylor P7 overall Ryan Davis makes his way through the final corner he's our next driver to finish the race on the lead lap and it will be the case Ryan Davis comes home P8 where is P4 in the the goal class the best of the rest in the goal class and then it will be well it is the case Rob Armstrong here making his way through what is the final corner and the silver driver here taking the win in the silver class back on top form is Rob Armstrong after a long hiatus from the top step well done to him Chris Hitch in the end a winning P2 in his mind he'll feel as though that's a win in his books to keep Billy Bob Ray behind and Billy Bob Ray P3 in the silver class P11 overall Chris Edison there ahead of Stephen Marsons P12 P13 followed by Colin Patterson then Stephen Kennedy P15 15, Darren Orquette P16, Phil Diaz P17, and well, where is our bronze leader? Well, here he is on the lead lap, the final driver to complete the race on the lead lap. Well, it's been the case that he wasn't quite there on the top step last time out at Sandown, but as he rolls his way through the final two corners here, it has been a bronze cast that has seen multiple drives fall off circuit, but he's the only one who has made it to the end without losing the lap on the leaders, and it is Oscar Rocha who returns to winning form for TGC Racing, who crosses the line p22 overall the bronze winner as he heads across that line and he will be very happy as he makes his way down on his cool down lap but as we do look to the uh, what is the scenic cameras here ladies and gentlemen let's bring you those race results of course subject to any stewards inquiries so as we do bring those results now they have been brought on in it is the case that after 40 minutes of racing here today at the Hungar Ring in round number 8 of the GT3 League Season 7 hosted by UK Sim Racing sponsored by Swilio Meda Sim Racing Coaching it is the case that Sly Anthony taking that win 9 seconds clear of the field ahead of Sam Congreve P2 Oliver Fennell P3 that was our overall podium Nathan Foster P4 in the end beating Martin Tillian on strategy and holding that rear guard action all the way to the finish completing the top Five there, Martin Tillin, and then Alex Hill at P6, Jacko Taylor P7 on his debut. He'll be pleased with that, but I think he'll be feeling as though he put a win to waste today. Ryan Davis P8, Rob Armstrong at P9, and Chris Hitching completing the overall top 10 with Billy Bob Ray there recovering to P11, not able to creep into the overall top 10, but still a brilliant recovery effort, particularly at a circuit where overtaking is very difficult to achieve. But as we look to the individual classes, we, of course, start off with the Platinum class. And it is the case we can see here. Science League reconfirmed, of course, as the winner by the nine-second margin over San Congreve and Fennell completing the Platinum podium. Alex Hill at P4. And really there, Alex Hill avoiding any instance. But the Tiki Sim Sport driver not quite there in relation to that top three. But then again, finishing comfortably ahead of Stephen Kennedy. And really from Kennedy downwards, Darren Norquette, Alistair Kirk, Jonathan Hitchin and Damien Lovett. All those drives involved in instance at some point and the biggest drama or really the biggest item of note today Jonathan Hitchin and Damien Lovett being involved in that lap two instance together and well it is the case it is the first time we have not seen Jonathan Hitchin finish a race this season it is the case he has been on form every race he's turned up to he has finished but it is the case today having to take that retirement and his impeccable record has been spoiled and I think Damien Lovett will not be happy that he's lost out on a major opportunity here at the Hungaroring in the Audi R8 
But as we look to the gold class, meanwhile, it is the case. We see there Nathan Foster in the end confirmed our winner half a second between him and Martin Tillin with Jacko Taylor completing the gold podium. A well-deserved podium there. And then Ryan Davies, the best of the rest, finishing at 27 seconds off of our winner. But here's the case. Davies will feel as though that is a win in itself, beating Chris Eddisford, Stephen Masters, Phil Diaz, Peter Cox, Anne Lever, and Dave Flanagan, who complete the top 10. And then, of course, it was the case. We saw the retirement eight laps from the end of Joe Newman and also the very early retirement of Ollie Pimley, classified as P12 there. As we look to the silver class standings, meanwhile, it is the case in a silver class which had few numbers today, but indeed a number of spoils and great battles. Rob Armstrong back on winning form today, winning by 3.8 seconds ahead of Chris Hitchin. Billy Bob Ray completing the podium, and you can imagine that Ray will be thinking to himself what could have been today if it hadn't gone wrong early on in the race and he had to make the recovery effort. So I think Armstrong and Hitchin will both know that they did get a break today, but to be fair, Hitchin had to hold Ray at bay to the end of the race. Colin Patterson, P4, Tyson Valenda, P5, and Jason Orr finishing a lap down in P6. And then looking to the bronze class. Last but not least, it is the case, of course, Oscar Rocha back on the top step with the win for TGC Racing, finishing effectively on the lead lap, whereas the rest of his class finished at least a lap down. James Connolly, P2. Darren Sharp was completing the podium, P3, albeit with that retirement, six laps on the end. And then Tom Farrell and Mark Cadmore completing the standings with Farrell and Cadmore both in premature retirements, particularly Mark Cadmore, who was only able to, in the end, get six laps into the race. Well, the big question you may be asking at this point, ladies and gentlemen, is how does this change things up in the standings? Well, we start off by looking at the overall standings. And you can see it is the case that Jonathan Hitchin not scoring any points today with that early retirement stays at 112 and a half points. But I don't think he'll be too perturbed given that his advantage has only slightly been cut and it has not been cut to second place. Well, Carl McGrath, not in attendance today, stays on 47 points. But Sai Anthony there moves up to P3, just half a point ahead of Sam Congreve with the win overall. Sam Congreve P4, and you can imagine that Congreve will be looking to try and get back into the top three as soon as possible but he in turn is only a point ahead of the gold driver of Nathan Foster and Carl McGurk of course a gold driver as well McGurk not in attendance today and he'll be treating it as one of his drop rounds given that our drivers have two drop sprint rounds and they have one drop feature round and you can imagine that Foster will be thinking that he's got to gain every point on McGurk whilst he can given the pace that McGurk has shown time and time again particularly at Sandown last time out. James Armstrong, P6, ahead of James Ackland by half a point, with then Darren Norquette, P8, a point ahead of Will Mason in P9, and then Damien Lobbit completing the top 10, and well, Oliver Fennell there on his debut, scoring 9.5 points, 9.5 points again for the debut on, and it is the case that the BMW M4 driver just outside of the top 10, but he'll be looking to make his breakthrough into the top 10 overall come the next round, there's no doubt about that, but keep your eyes out for the likes of Alistair Cook and Alex Hill, of course, P12 and P13, they'll also be looking for their time in the spotlight and well their time will come there's no doubt about that we then look to the platinum class and well with Hitchens retirement it is the case he's still been classified as picking up two points but I believe that is subject to the retirement classifications also being sorted out but it is the case that with those two points and 12 points going to Sam Congreve that advantage has been slashed slightly by a margin of what is 10 points albeit it's still a considerable margin of what is 67 points between P1 and P2 and Sam Congreve will know he's got a long way to go if he wants to try and win the championship. Darren Norquette, P3, and with four and a half points today, stays in P3 for the time being. But Cy Anthony there jumping all the way up to P4 on 41 points now. And with that win, he'll be looking to ride the crest of momentum after this round and look to get another win or at least another podium on the cards next time out in order to go hunting after Norquette and Congreve. Alex Hill, P5. And 36 and a half points. And then we have James Acklam and Will Mason both on 35 points, but separated on result count by Acklam ahead of Mason. And it is Alistair Kirk, Damien Lobbett and Stephen Kennedy who complete the top 10 in the Platinum class. Then in the Gold class by comparison, we'll now look at this, ladies and gentlemen, at the very top with a non-attendance today of Carl McGurk. It is the case. Now, McGurk is only half a point clear of Nathan Foster in P2. We've got drop scores to still account for, to be fair, but the rivalry is hotting up and the both drivers cannot afford to drop a single point where possible for the simple reason it could go to the wire at this rate. Nathan Scott, the best of the rest in P3 on 52 points, but not in attendance to today. And it is the case that Joshua Pratt in P4 close in the Delta, albeit not in attendance either, with Martin Tilling and Ryan Davies both on 43 and a half points and well it is Tilling ahead of Davies based on countback and then Chris Constable, Alan Lever, Stephen Masters and Chris Eddisford completing the gold top 10. Ollie Pimley just outside of the top 10 there by a single point off of Eddisford. 
And as we look to the silver class, by comparison, it is the case that we can see Rob Armstrong on 79 points, seven clear of Billy Bob Ray. And it is the case that Rob Armstrong has jumped back to the top of the standings today, albeit his swings and roundabouts for the silver drivers. And you can imagine that if you're Armstrong or Ray at drop points, then Tyson Belinda or Chris Hitchin or Colin Patterson or David Larson will all be there to pick up the points. This championship is far from over in the silver class. It definitely seems to be the case. At the moment, it is a six-horse race from Armstrong down to Lowison. Ryan Williams really then the best of the rest in P7. He has what is a 15-point advantage to Matthias Bezerra, who's in P8. And Bezerra, of course, being one of the charging stars early on in the season, it hasn't quite gone his way, and we haven't seen him for the last couple of rounds. Joseph Mars, P9, again, a fast charger, but we have not seen him recently. And Jason Orr completes the top 10. William Murray, just outside the top 10 there, by what is two and a half points. And we do hope to see him return in the near future. And then coming on to our bronze class, well, it's business as usual again for Oscar Rocha with that win now extending his lead back up to a margin of what is 32 points, albeit it is the case that you can imagine Darren Sharples will have been thinking that if he hadn't been involved in that early instant, it could have been his win once again. And that has really been the stories of Sharples this season. He has had a lot of bad luck. And well, he had the run, of course, at Sandown last time out, and he'll be looking to try and get the good luck once again in a week's time. James Conley there in P3 are gradually closing up to the top two little by little and jumped ahead of Mark Johnson who was not in attendance tonight and then Mark Cadmore on 39 and a half points best of the rest there one and a half points clear of Tom Farrell with Andrew Murray Kevin Wesley Burke Christian Clark and Martin Chapman completing the bronze top 10 and Matthew Rutledge just outside of that top 10 by a single point in P11. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for us to say thank you very much for watching. And if you did enjoy the show tonight and you do want to know more about the UK sim racing community, then why not check us out at our official links, in particular our website, ukcimracing.co.uk. Alternatively, you can go to our Twitter, that's twitter.com forward slash ukcimracing underscore. Also, a huge thank you to our affiliates. Of course, there are discount codes available on our website where you can make purchases with our affiliates. And it is the case you'll get a discount and we do get a kickback from your purchases which we invest back into the racing because we are a non-profit organization at UK Sim Racing. And our affiliates, we start off, of course, with Swelio, sorry, Swelio Almeida Sim Racing Coaching. And it is the case, of course, our title sponsor for this series. We've also got their Race Anywhere and Race Anywhere, of course, the provider of curated sim racing equipment aiming to only stock products that represent excellent value for the sim racing community. And also thank you to Demon Tweaks, our most recent affiliate. And it is the case, Demon Tweaks is the provider of the most complete and innovative motorsport product range available worldwide for real world motorsport so no matter what your level of discipline demon tweets could help drive you to realize your motorsport ambitions and indeed speaking of ambitions all of our drivers will be now packing up their bags and making their way from continental europe particularly from hungary back to japan to realize their ambitions as the season now enters its final third and round number nine the racing will take place on sunday the 14th of august but we'll be bringing it to you as if it were live on monday the 15th of august 2022 whose championship will continue on its chosen path who in the other hand will experience an upset or two we'll find out in a week's time but until then ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for tuning in we have been at uk sim racing i've been your host and commentator paul tx141 walsh also known as britain Spit. and until next time remember to stay safe stay well stay smiling but most importantly remember to stay on track good night